Don't build or upgrade your gaming PC before watching this video. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. We just got back from CES in Las Vegas where there were tons, and I mean tons of announcements for CPUs, for GPUs, for gaming monitors, and there are new trends in PC building that you're gonna wanna consider for your next build or upgrade. Buckle up for this lightning fast recap of all the cool PC tech coming in 2024. And of course, don't forget to like the video if you get value out of it. This guy really appreciates it right here and subscribe for cool PC building content. With that, Let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible Activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Let's start off with a GPU announcement that has everyone talking. Nvidia is launching three new GPUs, the RTX 4070 Super 12 gigabyte GPU for $600, Launching January 17th, the RTX 4070 Ti Super 16 gigabyte GPU for $800, launching January 24th, and the RTX 4080 Super 16 gigabyte GPU for $1,000, launching January 31st. Nvidia is also canceling the non-super versions of the existing RTX 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte GPU and RTX 4080, meaning that once current stock sells out, that will be the end of new stock for these two products. Though of course, they'll still continue to support them with driver updates. In terms of performance, the RTX 4070 Super will use a cutdown 4070 Ti die, the RTX 4070 Ti Super will use a cutdown 4080 die, and the RTX 4080 will use a slightly better version of the existing RTX 4080 die. In addition, the RTX 4070 Ti Super will have 16 gigabytes of VRAM instead of the 12 gigabytes on the 4070 Ti though the 4070 Super will still have to get by with 12 gigs of VRAM. Of course, we need to wait for actual testing, but based on specs alone, it seems like we'll see about a 5% bump in performance for the RTX 4080 Super over the 4080, a 10% performance increase for the RTX 4070 Ti Super over the RTX 4070 Ti, and up to a 15% increase in performance for the RTX 4070 Super over the RTX 4070. Of course, AMD also announced a new GPU, and maybe considering price cuts to its existing RX 7900 XTX, RX 7900 XT, and RX 7800 XT to maintain its price to performance advantage over Nvidia. The RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte was announced and it's a card we covered in detail. So I'll leave that video linked in the description. But basically it's a slightly overclocked RX 7600 with 16 gigs of VRAM for $329 launching January 24th, the same day as the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Now based on AMD's performance data, which obviously take with a grain of salt, just like Nvidia's data, the 7600 XT 16 gigabyte, is gonna be about 10% faster than the eight gig version, which would basically put it solidly ahead of the RTX 4060 eight gigabyte GPU, given that it's essentially tied right now in performance with the RX 7600 eight gig. In addition, when we sat down with AMD, they said that we should expect their response to Nvidia's RTX 4000 Super announcements soon, though they didn't say what that response would be. Either way, I'd definitely wait to buy a GPU until after all the launches in January. Let's move over to CPU launches because there were tons of them during CES, starting off with AMD, which again, we covered in depth. So I'll leave that video link down in the description if you want a deeper dive. AMD announced Four new CPUs on the older AM4 socket, including the Ryzen 5700X3D for $249. That's probably the most interesting one as it's just a 5800X3D that's been slightly downclocked by about 400 megahertz and it could offer similar gaming performance for $100 less. Also announced with the Ryzen 5700 non-X for 175, it's just a Ryzen 5700G APU without the integrated graphics, but it will include a stock cooler and the Ryzen 5600 GT for $140 and the Ryzen 5500 GT for $125, which is just variants of the existing Ryzen 5600G APU. Now remember, Ryzen 5000 APU series only has about half the L3 cache as the actual Ryzen 5000 series like the Ryzen 5600X. So they have much weaker gaming performance in exchange for relatively weak onboard integrated graphics. Overall, the 5700X3D looks super interesting, but pricing on the other three Ryzen 5000 CPUs announced, and they do launch January 31st, it seems way too high, but they may become more interesting with price drops, just as would happen with the Ryzen 5500. AMD also announced the Ryzen 8000 series desktop APUs on the AM5 platform, 
To be clear, these are not the Zen 5 based CPU successor to the current Ryzen 7000 series. Instead, they're basically a hybrid of a Ryzen 7000 series processor, but with only about half the amount of L3 cache. So again, weaker gaming performance. In exchange for that, they have stronger integrated graphics and they also have these new neural processing units or NPUs for short, which will enable AI compute functions on the CPU, which don't currently offer any gaming benefits, but AMD said we could see that change in a couple years as developers start to leverage the new technology. We covered these in detail in our AMD announcement video, so check that out for a deeper dive. I'll reserve final judgment until we see testing, but honestly, in my opinion, nobody building a system with a dedicated GPU is gonna wanna use these over the existing Ryzen 7000 series CPUs or the upcoming Zen 5 based Ryzen CPUs, which AMD has yet to announce, but we're expecting later this year. Of course, Intel also launched what it called its 14th gen locked CPUs, which with the exception of the i7-14700 and 14700F are just the same exact 13th gen parts with a tiny bump to clock speed and all of them are gonna include a stock cooler. Of course, many of the 13th gen parts were just rebadged 12th gen parts with a small clock speed boost too. So some of these CPUs have basically been recycled twice. Remember that Intel CPUs with the F at the end of their name, it just means it doesn't have integrated graphics, which is really only useful for video editors utilizing Intel QuickSync for video export. And for everyone else, the F parts are generally better value. The most relevant CPUs include the four performance core i3-14100, currently selling for $124 at Newegg, i5-14400 with six performance cores and four efficiency cores, selling for 214, the six performance core and eight efficiency core, i5-14500, selling for $239. The eight performance core and 12 efficiency core, i7-14700, selling for $369. And the eight performance core and 16 efficiency core, i9-14900, selling for $559. Looking at pricing currently on Newegg for these CPUs, and they're either just a little bit more than their 13th gen counterparts, with some being massively overpriced versus better 12th and 13th gen CPUs. Like for instance, the i3-14100 being the same price as the i5 12600K and the 14700 and 14900 lock CPUs costing more than the unlocked versions. In my opinion, this is a total mess for Intel and it's no wonder when looking at retail sales data that AMD is absolutely crushing them on the DIY PC market. Though this may give them cover to finally lower some CPU prices in the 12th and 13th gen to better compete with way better value Ryzen CPUs. We'll cover all of this in our next best CPU for gaming video coming soon. Some of the most exciting news, it was actually in the gaming monitor segment where it really seems like 2024 is gonna be the year that OLED gaming monitors get insane performance at the high end. And at the same time, we see prices drop significantly which is likely to put even more downward pressure on LCD monitor prices. Now there are literally dozens and dozens of new OLED gaming monitors ranging from much more affordable 144 to 180 Hertz, 1440p and 4K versions to amazing 1440p, 360 Hertz, that's right, 360 Hertz and 4K 240 Hertz monitors at surprisingly lower prices to insane 1440p, 480 Hertz FPS gaming champions like the new Asus ROG Swift OLED PG27AQDP. We saw models from Gigabyte, MSI, and ASUS. And personally, I was really impressed with the quality, including improvements to text clarity, reduction of risk from burn-in, which in my opinion was already pretty low in existing models, but it's even lower now, and maintaining the impressive HDR image quality and color while significantly improving refresh rates. I think the main draw for a lot of gamers is gonna be the coming 4K 240 Hertz and the 1440p 360 Hertz, which should be priced below where the current crop of 14 1440p, 240 hertz monitors is currently selling at around 900 US dollars. That's right, they're gonna be cheaper probably. Most of these models will launch starting in the second quarter of the year through the fall, and just like with the previous OLED launches, may be hard to get even once they hit the market, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, one of the most exciting announcements for PC builders seems to be that cableless builds might finally be here. Now, for years, Board manufacturers have tried to market motherboards, even GPUs that have cable connectors on the backside of the board so that all the cables are hidden. But it's been plagued by a lack of compatible cases and differing standards. I'm excited to say it seems like everyone has finally gotten their act together 
both the motherboard makers and the case manufacturers, and the dream seems like a reality. We took a look at both MSI's Project Zero motherboards and the ASUS BTF builds that shove all the cables out of sight, and they look amazing. On the motherboards, this is accomplished by putting all the connectors on the backside, and the ASUS Advanced BTF motherboards take it one step further by moving the power connector for the BTF GPU to a PCIe slot on the bottom of the card, which will of course require that you use an ASUS BTF GPU and ASUS Advanced BTF motherboard. Note that the non-advanced BTF ASUS motherboards won't include the GPU connector. It's a little confusing, but it all works. Case compatibility has always been an issue as you need a case with the proper cutouts for these backward cable connectors. Thankfully, a huge number of case manufacturers from Cooler Master to Thermaltake to many others showed off their compatible cases, and honestly, I think they all look amazing. The ASUS BTF is initially launching in the next month with tough and strict versions of the BTF Advanced Intel Z790 motherboards and regular BTF Intel B760 Micro ATX motherboard. Two ASUS BTF GPUs are launching the RTX 4090, BTF Strix in January, and the RTX 4070 Ti Super BTF in March. MSI Project Zero boards and cases are already available in the US right now, including the ATX size Intel Z790 chipset motherboard and micro ATX size versions for both the Intel B760 chipset as well as the AMD Ryzen B650 chipset. Right now, MSI is offering pretty good discounts on Project Zero cases and motherboard combo deals, so I'll leave those linked down in the video description if you want to check them out. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like us to do a full build guide for MSI Project Zero and ASUS BTF. Finally, we saw a number of other trends from AIO coolers with LCD screens at much cheaper price points like the new Deepcool AIOs with very impressive screen resolution to everyone adopting magnetic connectors on their ARGB fans to amazing new PC cases at very good price points from Deepcool, Cooler Master, Thermaltake, to fantastic gaming mice and keyboards and beyond. Now, most of these products, they should be launching in the very near future. So in my opinion, 2024, it's gonna be another amazing year for PC building and for PC gaming. Let me know down in the comments, what are you most excited about? And of course, if you got value in this video, please give it a like, cause it really helps the channel. And this guy appreciates it right here and subscribe for more cool PC building content. Hey, speaking of which, check out our full RX 7600 16 gigabyte GPU and Ryzen CPU launch video right here. And we go into detail and break everything down from performance expectations to pricing a launch date. And I'll catch you on the next one.